as of the end of 2023, I have ridden 1,294 different roller coasters, 1,125 made of steel, 169 made of wood. In 2023, I rode 64 new roller coasters, and 8 of those cracked my top 100. Other coasters moved up as I got re-rides on them, while others moved down. This will be a two-part video ranking my favorite 100 roller coasters in the world that I have personally ridden. This is why you will not see rides from places like China or South Korea, as I have not been there. This video will cover spots 50 through 1. A different video was released with spots 100 through 51 just one or two days ago. This list will combine both wood and steel coasters into one list. I place rides assuming I'm in my favorite seat. I tend to prioritize rides with great airtime, strong pacing, and beautiful settings. This list is all my personal opinion, and I don't expect anyone to have the same list as me. When comparing two rides, it comes down to which one I have more fun on. If you want more in-depth thoughts on many of these rides, I already have separate reviews published for most of them on this channel. Also, to avoid being redundant, assume the rides on this list are smooth unless otherwise noted. Number 50. Mako at SeaWorld Orlando this b and hypercoaster is an exceptional first half when it runs untrimmed. Every single hill is strong and copious flagector airtime. It is absolutely heavenly with those clamshell restraints. The second half is not as airtime focused, but there are two swooping turns with some shocking laterals as you bank over the pathways in water. Number 49, Silver Star at Europa Park. This b and hypercoaster is an equally strong first and second half. I do need to note that I've only experienced this coaster untrimmed, so I have experienced it in peak form. The first half is large hills with good floater airtime. The second half is even better. There are some borderline ejector pops, which is a rare and unique sensation on a B&M Hyper. Then there's a solid helix and some quick twists before the final brake run. Number 48, Orion at Kings Island. This B&M Giga Coaster starts with a world-class drop. It offers so much airtime. The first few valleys offer blistering speed and good positive Gs. The first few hills are large in scale and only offer weak airtime, but it is unique that you're sideways. The return run has some additional airtime hills offering sweet flagector airtime, and there's also a decently forceful helix. Number 47, Formula Rosa Ferrari World. This is the world's fastest coaster. This intimate accelerator coaster kicks things off with a powerful hydraulic launch. It has a great initial yank, but it hits a second gear halfway down that is otherworldly. Then the ride offers a long layout. The ride never slows down, and every single hill offers nice floater airtime, which is extra sweet when paired with all that speed. Number 46, Lek Coaster Legendia. This Facoma creation is one of the world's best coasters for positive Gs. There are so many spots of high and sustained positive Gs, so I kept on graying out. But that's not all this coaster does. The ride has some good spots of ejector airtime, most notably that devilishly twisted first drop. And that's even with this coaster having restrictive vest restraints. Then the inversions later in the ride of great whip, including that visually stunning barrel roll through the station. Number 45, Cyclone at Luna Park. This classic wood coaster is a wild experience. A lot of that comes down to the trains. These have single position lap bars that allow plenty of room for airtime. The back has some wild ejector airtime in the largest drops. The front isn't too shabby either. And the seats have no dividers, so the laterals will chuck you across the train. I think the laterals are strongest in front as you're slammed into each turnaround. This coaster is a bit bumpy, but the trains are like couches so there's no pain at all. Number 44, Schwer Discarnate at Hansa Park. If only this ride were smooth. This Gerslauer hypercoaster is such a fast and forceful layout, but my last rides on it were shaky and resulted in a headache. I love the elements. There are some wicked turns with intense laterals, and there are some powerful ejector airtime moments. My favorite of the bunch has to be that twisted first drop in the dark. This coaster also has some additional surprise elements indoors, and some wonderful theming before the main coaster bit. 
Number 43, Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. This CCI wood coaster was refurbished by GCI several years ago, and it has run like a dream ever since. This ride feels completely out of control. The first half has some larger hills with some sustained airtime. The second half kicks things off with an ejector airtime filled plunge. Then the ride zips through a dense wooden support structure. The remaining hills have sharp jolts of airtime, then the directional changes of strong laterals, most notably the final helix as you pin to the side of the train for 10 straight seconds. Number 42, Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. This RMC creation can be a tad temperamental, but my last rides in 2021 were excellent. Most hills delivered sharp ejector airtime. I loved the sustained negative Gs in the large camelback and the violence of the trick track double up. Then this coaster also throws in some fun inversions. The barrel roll down drop at the start is great hang time. Then the zero G roll later in the ride is fantastic whip and laterals. Number 41, Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. This RMC hybrid is an ejector airtime machine. The trio of camelbacks offer strong and sustained ejector airtime, which is a treat for this type of ride. The remaining hills offer the briefer bursts of ejector airtime that RMC is known for. Then this coaster also throws in some fun inversions, as both the barrel roll down drop and zero G roll have excellent hang time. This ride does not feel overly fast though, which puts it behind the next few RMCs in this list. Number 40, Wildcats Revenge at Hershey Park. This RMC creation is the pacing of their larger hypers. This coaster charges from one element to the next. There aren't too many traditional bunny hills, yet this coaster is no shortage of ejector airtime, as there are multiple off-axis and sideways hills that'll pop you out of your seat. Then this coaster has some surprise laterals, particularly in the double down, and there are four inversions offering great hang timer laterals. Number 39, Medusa Steel Coaster at Six Flags Mexico. I finally experienced this coaster properly in 2023 with steel wheels and a six car train, and it shot up my ranks. Despite being one of the smallest RMC hybrids, it has phenomenal pacing. This ride hauls. There aren't too many basic bunny hills, but the turnarounds blend strong laterals and or ejector airtime pops. Then there's a great off-axis hill in the woods. Then the three inversions are fantastic, particularly the first and last ones that offer exceptional hang time. Number 38, Wildfire Colmartin Zoo. This RMC Topper Track Wood Coaster is one of the best starts of any coaster. The super steep first drop offers strong and sustained ejector airtime. The large stall has lots of inverted airtime. Then the twist and shout violently ejects you while sideways. This rise a visually stunning location on a hill, but this does cause the coaster to lose some steam in the second half as you climb back up it. Most hills still offer decent pops of airtime at least and the two zero-g rolls have great hang time. Number 37, Superman al Ultimo Escape at Six Flags Mexico. Morgan's final hyper coaster is their best ground-up creation. This ride is such a strange coaster in a good way. The pre-lift section has some airtime pops as you wind down a hill. The main layout has plenty of hills with very sustained floater airtime. But the helix is the star. This section blends great positive Gs crushing laterals, and surprising ejector pops into one dazzling sequence. I cannot believe how this element tossed me about the train. Number 36, Flying Dinosaur at Universal Studios Japan. This may be b and most intense coaster. The start is insane. There's a steep first drop with odd air time since you're in the flying position. Then you have two of the most forceful elements back to back. You have this inversion that rotates you 540 degrees, so you end up on your back. You get cheese like a pretzel loop. And immediately afterwards, you go into the actual pretzel loop, which is as intense as you'd expect. The second half is visually cool flying over pathways and waterways. Then there are still some decently forceful turns and two slow inversions offering hang time. Number 35, Millennium Force at Cedar Point. This Intamin Giga Coaster is all about speed. The experience is magical in the front row. The ride never slows down, 
so it's blissful feeling all that wind in your face. This coaster also has some great elements as well. The first drop is epic between the view and airtime. The initial overbank has super sustained positive G's and it is a hard grey out for me. Then the few straight hills offer nice floater airtime. Number 34, Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. This Intamin Giga Coaster starts with an impressive drop like Millennium Force, but this ride is far wilder. It has the directional changes of a ride like Maverick, which is crazy given this ride's speed. The initial turn is a guaranteed grey out, and possibly a blackout for some. Then the following transitions are extremely abrupt and rowdy, offering wild laterals and airtime pops simultaneously. The coasters higher on this list do better in the airtime department, but I cannot deny this coaster's raw intensity. Number 33, Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. This B&M hyper coaster is a powerhouse. These rides always have sustained airtime, but several hills cross into the ejector range in Goliath. Then the helix turnaround is a major gray out moment for me from all the sustained G's. I also like how this coaster travels outside the park's boundaries, running past roadways and waterways. A few valleys in the first half will shake the train, but it's not enough to ruin everything this coaster does well. Number 32, Tutatis at Park Asterix. This Intamin multi-launch coaster feels similar to Pantheon with a more action-packed second half. That second half hugs the ground while throwing in all sorts of elements. There are two wild inversions and a wide variety of airtime hills, some straightforward and some sideways. Then the first half is very similar with an exciting swing launch sequence. This one just has more theming. The launches are punchy, the bunny hill mid-launch offers wild ejector airtime, and the spike is great hang time. I just wish there wasn't a trim on the top hat. That's the one buzz kill on this ride. Number 31, X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Arrow's final coaster was revolutionary. The seats in this 4D coaster can flip throughout the layout. When you add in hyper heights and super forceful elements, this ride is insane. The inversions are incredible. The near vertical first drop performs a flip at the very last second. The raven turn offers a blend of positive and negative G's. Then the camelbacks have some scary air time while also flipping you. The final raven turn is a powerful burst of positive G's, but it is very shaky, as are some other valleys in this ride. Try to ride on an inside seat if possible. Number 30, Edge and Ica Fuji Q Highland. This is SNS's follow up to X2. This amplifies everything X2 does, both good and bad. It is taller, faster, and flips more. The ride also fixed the pacing on the far turnaround, transforming it from a relative dud of an element to a genuinely exciting moment but this ride was even bouncier than X2 when I rode it. Number 29, Phoenix at Knobles. This classic PTC wood coaster is special because of the restraints, or lack thereof. There are just buzz bars and no seat belts, so any airtime moment will lift you a foot into the air. The first half is solid, but the ride really picks things up in the second half. The last six hills of epic ejector pops, it is downright frightening getting that caliber of airtime with restraints this minimal, but I love it. It looks cartoonish seeing people launched airborne off-ride, but the ride really is that powerful. Number 28, Hyperion at Energylandia. This large Intamin Hyper starts as an out-and-back coaster, but the second half is elements of a twister. There is so much variety here. The first half has some powerful and sustained airtime, particularly in the first drop and the subsequent camelback. The directional changes offer nice laterals and or good positive G's. And the small hills towards the end offer brief but punchy airtime pops. There is a bit of a lull in the middle of the layout, but the ride starts and ends very strong. Number 27, Taiga at Linen Maki. This Intamin multi-launch coaster is a neat location on a hill, the terrain use is brilliant, and the high points offer beautiful views of Helsinki. The layout is excellent as well, between the elements and pacing. The ride has two solid launches, and several nice airtime moments. 
those negative Gs are not quite as strong as the Intamin multi-launches higher on this list, but they're still quite good. The standouts for me are the inversions, the 0G winder at the very start, the supersized stall in the middle, and the barrel roll at the very end offer fantastic hang time. Number 26, Shambhala Port Aventura. This is the best B&M hypercoaster. It is taller than most, so the ride is a series of long drops loaded with strong floater air time. The drops even last long enough to give a rare tummy tickling sensation for me. The pullouts and turnarounds offer nice positive G's as well. Then this is better pacing than usual by minimizing trims and putting the mid-course brake run towards the very end of the layout. And the ride offers stunning views of the mountains and water as you navigate the layout. Number 25, Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park. This Intamin Mega Coaster is some of the best sustained ejector airtime of any coaster. The Camelbacks and Bunny Hills are glorious. Then the first drop is epic, as it also offers powerful ejector airtime, but the twist also induces wild laterals. The middle section lets its foot off the gas slightly with a series of okay turns and overbanks, but the ride's nicely wooded setting helps compensate. Number 24, Fury 325 at Carowinds. This B&M Giga Coaster is a more complete layout than the other Gigas earlier in this list. The first drop is equally as amazing as that of Orion. Then the first half hugs the ground. This showcases the ride's speed and the transitions of crazy laterals. Then the second half is sustained flagector airtime on many hills. There are one or two elements on the return run that are just okay such as the Helix, but most of this coaster is truly elite. Number 23. Coaster at Peony Playland. When I rode this coaster, it felt like a wilder version of Phoenix. The ride had even more minimalistic restraints and zero seatbelts. This resulted in some of the scariest airtime of any coaster. Then there were no seat dividers, so the minimally banked directional changes were tossing me side to side. However, this ride has since received retractable seatbelts that have negatively impacted the experience. So unfortunately, I suspect this coaster will move down the next time I ride it. Number 22, Fly of Fantasia Land. This innovative Vacoma flying coaster is a visual marvel. This coaster winds its way through the land of Rookburg. Then the layout is exciting as well. It is nearly impossible to memorize the layout. Then the elements are strong too. The launch is of nice zip to them. The ride is a half dozen unique airtime moments. The inversions are graceful and floaty, then the valleys and turns offer crushing positive Gs. This is particularly true in the back rows. Number 21, DC Rivals Hypercoaster at Warner Brothers Movie World. This mock hypercoaster is a long and diverse ride. This placement is specifically for the backwards row. This ride is very strong ejector airtime at the start and end. Getting this type of airtime in reverse is glorious. I particularly love the twisting first drop and unique non-inverting loop, because they offer both powerful airtime and lateral simultaneously. The middle section is all sorts of directional changes offering a mix of airtime pops, lateral kinks, and positive Gs. This part does have a bit of a pacing issue in most rows, but the disorientation factor of the backwards row counteracts this. Number 20. Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This RMC hybrid coaster is a rare quasi-Mobius layout, meaning you experience both sides. This gives the coaster great length. Now unfortunately, duels in this coaster are fairly uncommon. The visuals are epic when you get one though. Fortunately, the elements are very strong on their own. Most hills offer strong ejector airtime. Then the two inversions are spectacular. The stall has inverted airtime then the Zero-G roll is Vicious Laterals. Number 19, Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England. This intimate hypercoaster is set up like Hyperion. The first half has an outward leg with super sustained ejector airtime. The fourth hill in particular is one of the single best hills of any coaster. Then the second half is a twister combining good positive Gs, quick airtime pops, and near misses as you wind around the area. The retrofitted U-brick restraints are a major detriment for many, but they personally do not bother me or inhibit the forces. 
Number 18, Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds. This CCI wood coaster is special because of the location. It charges along a heavily wooded mountainside. Night rides are particularly epic because there's very little light back there. Then this ride is a great layout anyway. It is an out and back coaster with plenty of hills, most of which offer good floater airtime. But there are subtle directional changes mixing in nice laterals as well. And this ride was running faster and smoother than usual in 2023 with the addition of some steel Titan track at the start. Number 17, Sky Rush at Hershey Park. This intimate hyper coaster is one of the most intense rides out there. This ride is some of the strongest ejector airtime of any coaster. It is particularly evident in the first drop that has a bizarre springboard effect halfway down. The valleys of heavy positive G's. Then the twisted hills offer some of the most violent laterals of any coaster. It feels like you'll be snapped out of the train. And I think the restraints augment these sensations. This coaster doesn't have as many elements as the rides higher on this list, which is why it doesn't place any higher. Number 16. Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This RMC hybrid coaster has an amazing location on a quarry. The largest drops take full advantage of this. The first drop in particular is my favorite drop of any coaster, between the size, powerful ejector airtime, and the lateral kink. The ride also has some other strong airtime moments, and a wonderfully floaty zero-g roll. The ride does lose a lot of speed atop the quarry wall, but the elements up there still hit for me because they toss you from your seat. In this ride is the far superior Gerslauer trains that amplify the already great forces. Number 15. Helix at Lisa Berry. This mock multi-launch coaster is exceptional. This ride is a long layout that winds its way around a heavily wooded hill. But you're not just dodging trees, you're also avoiding other rides and pathways. And the high points offer stunning views of Gothenburg skyline. The visuals in this ride are among the best of any coaster. It also has amazing elements. There are seven great inversions, most of which get you out of your seat in some capacity. Then there are plenty of airtime hills, particularly the giant camelbacks. These are some of the best elements of any coaster. The launches are admittedly weak, but everything else is near perfection. Number 14, Zadra at Energylandia. This is a rare ground up RMC hybrid coaster, and it is one of the fastest paced coasters in the world. The speed and progression of elements is astounding. The first half is amazing. I love the colossal first drop, the giant turnaround, the supersized stall, and the twist and shout all have super sustained airtime. The middle bit is good, not great. Then the finale ends with a bang as there's this feisty S hill and a rapid barrel roll into the final break run. Number 13, Shivering Timbers at Michigan's Adventure. This CCI wood coaster is an airtime machine. You'd be hard pressed to name anything with more floater airtime. This is a long out and back coaster with one airtime hill after another. They all hit in terms of strength and duration. It seems like you spend more time out of your seat than you spend in it. Then for variety, the far turnaround and final helix offer strong laterals to complement all those negative G's. Number 12, Ride to Happiness of Plopsaland de Pan. This is the best of the mock extreme spinners. This ride is chaos. The vehicles spin faster than the others, and there are several powerful airtime moments, particularly that broken up top hat in the final few hills. They are magical when taken in reverse. Then the inversions are excellent as well. The hang time and the JoJo roll out of the station, and especially the double dive loop are exceptional. The latter is ultra disorienting. There are a few elements in the first half that are good, not great, but this ride's best moments are as good as any coaster. Number 11, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. This is a special hyper coaster. Morgan took an old Arrow multi looper and transformed it into a fast and forceful hyper coaster. This ride uses the terrain to perfection, as the second drop is gigantic and dives down a ravine. Then there's an overbank with crushing positive G's. The second half has some of the strongest ejector airtime out there. It is powerful on its own, but it's extra sweet with the roomy restraints. This ride is a bit short for a hyper coaster, which just keeps it out of the top 10. Number 10, 
VelociCoaster at Islands of Adventure. This intimate multi-launch coaster is an amazing ride in all aspects. The ride tells a cohesive story, and there's nice theming in the queue line first half, as the train winds its way through a raptor paddock. There are some great near misses. Then the elements are strong too. The launches are punchy. There are some good airtime moments, most notably the top hat. And the foreign versions are world class. They all lift you from your seat. The Mosasaurus roll is particularly memorable as you're laterally ejected mere feet above the water. Number 9. Batman Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner Madrid. This is yet another intimate multi launch coaster with many similarities to Velocicoaster. This ride also has great theming in the queue line and the pre launch sequence. Then the Leo is similarly as dynamic. The ride has some impressive ejector airtime particularly on the top hat and the subsequent camelback. The foreign versions are amazing as well, with the stall having breathtaking hang time. It may be the best inversion in the world. I give this ride the edge over Velocicoaster because there are less filler elements, so the pacing is even tighter. Number 8. Conda at Wallaby, Belgium. This intimate mega coaster feels like the marriage of their old hypers and an RMC hybrid coaster. This ride starts off with a twisting first drop, similarly as great as the one Expedition G-Force. Then there are some large camelbacks with extreme and sustained ejector airtime. The return run feels like something from an RMC, as there's a rapid fire series of bunny humps. Just where you'd see an inversion, you have a larger bunny hill giving sustained ejector instead. Number 7. Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. This RMC wood coaster has lightning quick pacing. This ride drops down a hill, and most elements hug the ground. The speed is further augmented by all the trees you whiz past. This setting also results in epic night rides. The only time you slow down is on the double barrel roll at the end when you climb back up the hill. But it's advantageous to slow down here for increased hang time. Then there's plenty of air time. The first drop is among the best in the world. Then there are several smaller hills with sharp ejector airtime, including some that are sideways. The ride does have two slight cons though. One, it can be bumpy in wheel seats. Two, it is on the shorter side. Number 6. Untamed at Wallaby Holland. This RMC hybrid coaster is an ejector airtime buffet. The first half has some larger hills with sustained airtime. The others offer more rapid bursts of airtime. Then this ride also mixes in the most inversions of any RMC with five. They all offer wonderful hang time, particularly the double barrel roll at the start. Now I do need to add the caveat that I've only ridden this coaster on days when it poured, so it may have been running abnormally fast from the slick track. Number 5. Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa. This is a monstrous RMC hybrid coaster. It has phenomenal speed and pacing. There is a lot of strong ejector airtime, most notably in the slightly beyond vertical first drop, the giant outer bank that follows, the wave turn underneath the lift hill, and the final few drops. I also love the death roll. It is super disorienting and loaded with intense laterals. And this coaster also has better positive Gs than most RMCs. Number 4. Airy Force One at Fun Spot Atlanta. This is yet another RMC hybrid. This one feels like Untamed, but even wilder. There is some truly special airtime, such as the Outer Bank and the Quad Down. The latter is one of the most aggressive airtime sequences of any coaster. Then there are four fantastic inversions. The stall has you hanging for several seconds. Then the two barrel rolls later in the ride are taken at breakneck speeds and they offer insane laterals. Every element on this coaster hits, and I love its frenetic nature. Number 3. Voyage at Holiday World This Gravity Group wood coaster is absurdly long, and it feels like three rides in one. The outward leg is these giant camelbacks loaded with airtime. The turnaround section mixes bunny hills and quick turns. Then the return leg weaves back and forth, while also throwing in plenty of bunny hills. This ride holds its speed incredibly well for its length, and nearly every hill offers airtime. 
It feels like an endurance test in the best way possible, and night rides in this coaster are legendary. Number 2. Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point RMC's original Hyper Hybrid is the best coaster in the world for ejector airtime. Nearly every hill offers that type of airtime, and it is strong too. The first few elements have sustained airtime, with the giant outward bank standing out most. The second half alone is better than many coasters in this list, with the sheer quantity of bunny hills. Then this ride also mixes in four inversions, and I love their placement in between all those negative Gs. And coming in at number one is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. This RMC creation is spectacular. The second you crest the near vertical drop, this ride does not slow down. The ride follows up with some large hills offering sustained sideways airtime. Then the rest of the coaster offers briefer, but ultra powerful bursts of airtime. That is particularly true in the quad down. There is a reason the sequence is so highly regarded by everyone. There is not a single dead spot on this coaster, and it also features a marvelous location on a wooded mountain. This is great by day, but even better at night when you cannot see a thing. When I last rode this coaster, it still had its launch, and since it was an uphill launch, it had good positive Gs. Now this was recently switched out with a chain lift for reliability purposes. I am intrigued to get back on this ride in the future, and see if it's still my favorite coaster. So those are my top 50 favorite roller coasters as of the end of the 2023 season. What is your favorite coaster? Let me know down in the comments. Likewise, let me know if you have any comments on the rides I've mentioned, or any I may have failed to mention. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there will be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.